There we go. So, we now turn to Pam in the corner. Now then, what have you got for us today? I'm going to tell you a tragic story of unrequited love. Oh. <laughs> uh, it goes like this. It's called Not You, Basil. <laughs> Basil, he loved Ethel. In his heart there burned a flame. Every night he gripped the sheets and whispered Ethel's name. Ethel. He saw her every morning and the breath caught in his throat. He loved her in her summer dress and in her winter coat. Each night the lovely Ethel, she came to him in a dream and lay reclining in the boat, he rowed them in upstream. Her hands trailed in the water and she was a wondrous sight, saying, Basil, I can wait no more. Take me tonight. But his love was unrequited. When he saw her every day, she only said, hello, and hurried past him on her way to catch the bus to work, where every day from morn to eve, she gazed out of the window thinking of her true love, Steve. <laughs> now, Steve, he ran a scrapyard. Once a week, he'd knock the door, and Ethel, she would open it, saying, I know what you've come for. Your rag and bones, she'd say, and here they are in this here sack. And she'd watch with heart a flutter, as he heaved him on his back. She never thought of Basil, never knew that he was there. From morn to eve, she thought of Steve, her fingers in his hair. For Steve was rugged like an oak, while Basil, like a skittle, had no physique of which to speak. His biceps, say, was little. <laughs> but his ardour never cooled, and to himself he sadly said, if Ethel cannot love me, I would just as soon be dead. I'll knock upon her door and say, I love you, and forsooth, she can either take or leave me, but at least I'll know the truth. So he knocked upon her door, and when she answered, he began, I know someone who you could make a very happy man. Ethel gripped the doorpost. Is it Steve? Oh, can it be? And Basil, looking at her, he said, No, you fool, it's me. <laughs> she said... Oh, not you, Basil. I thought you'd come on Steve's behalf, as though he'd see a girl like me. She laughed, a tragic laugh. Ha! She said, I interrupted you. What were you going to say? And Basil said, don't matter. And he coldly walked away. Back in his house, he primed his gun and placed it to his head. I die for Ethel, though my death will grieve her not, he said. You don't get rhymes like that in anybody else's poetry. <laughs> he strained to press the trigger, but his courage upped and fled. So he rushed out in the garden and he shot the cat instead. That's <laughs> 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 uh, very sad. That's <laughs> uh, very funny. And the poor old cat as well. Poor. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. That That's was brilliant.